Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking to veteran trader Peter Brandt and YouTuber streamer trader Eric Crown about the mercurial, ever elusive Bitcoin market. As you predicted, Eric, we saw Bitcoin make a sizable move last week, which unfortunately was not in the direction we had hoped. You predicted that if we were to see a downward move such as this, Bitcoin could end up somewhere in the six, in the six to seven K range. Do you still stand by that prediction? And Peter, what do you make of Eric's assessment of the current trend of the market? Yep. So I do still stand by that. Um, as long as Bitcoin is below about 9,100, I do remain uh, I, I do remain bearish, and I do believe that we have another leg to go. Probably back down to the $7,000 level, give or take a couple hundred bucks. Um, that does seem to be where a lot of things, a lot of tentacles are lining up with. I can bring up my screen share right now. So overall, um, Bitcoin does look to play off of this monthly um, 21 exponential moon average. From a historical standpoint, uh, we do see, and sorry, it's this yellow guy right here. We do see that that's kind of the general, um, uh, the general kind of phase of cider, I suppose you could say, um, for generally bullish or generally bearish. When we're below, generally bearish. When, when we're above it, generally bullish. And uh, as you can see right now, even with all this downside volatility, Bitcoin still is not even tested. It is currently hanging around the uh, $7,000 marker right here. While that does look pretty nice and does look pretty uh, beautiful, it does suggest that we probably do have a little bit more downside here to go. Um, based off of what we're looking at, of course, on the daily uh, volatility metrics as well, we do see volatility is expanding once again after uh, after getting down to a piss poor level, um, a level that we haven't seen since uh, really uh, May of this current year before this massive explosion from the $5,000 base to uh, basically a 2x over the next uh, week and a half, two weeks. So, you know, you know, Bitcoin's bouncing right now and it's kind of held below all these major moving averages. It looks like we're kind of wedged between the 200 simple and the, and the uh, blue three sevenths and exponential moving average right here. So, you know, we're probably going to we're, we're probably going to play out a little bit of a bounce. Uh, maybe trade sideways for a little bit of time in this range between the, between about 87.50 and uh, kind of our base at around 8,000 low, I suppose. And uh, things, you know, as long as we're below 87.50, I do believe that this is kind of shaping up to be redistribution. Who, how, you know, how long does it take? Nobody knows. But uh, as long, uh, you know, my key point here is that yes, I do kind of stand, uh, I do kind of stick with that. As long as we remain below 87.50, that's kind of my pivot for immediately being bearish. And then if we get back above 91, um, hundred, that would be kind of my full bull, you know, no more bearish or anything like that. That's basically just, that's, that's mostly based off of the weekly 21 exponential moon average, which I'll kind of just, uh, get rid of everything here. I do apologize for going a little bit more longer than, uh, than I probably should have, but this one, uh, this yellow moving average has been a pretty damn good, you know, uh, uh, decider once again of sort of which sort of phase that we're in. And when Bitcoin's in a generally bullish market, loves to play off it on its uh, bullish dumps, if you want to call it that. And in a bearish market, likes to kind of use it as its resistance point. And uh, right now, it's currently coming in right around that 9100-ish level. And I'd have to say that as long as we're below there, I have a very hard time being, you know, like immediately bullish, so to speak. I would love for Bitcoin to go back above there, and that would certainly change my mind, and we could get back to uh, to talking about bullish type of things. But as long as we're below there, I do believe that uh, it's it's a lot more likely that we do hit that next target down towards about seven thousand bucks. What do you make of all that, Peter? Well, hey, hey, I'm I'm impressed that a young guy uses moving averages to begin with. I think that's <laughs> awesome. I thought just us old guys use moving averages, but moving averages are a great, great uh, d default proxy for trend. So, you know, the question is, what's your time length? And everybody has different time lengths, and different time lengths produce different things. And you know, time scale is important. You know, whether you're looking at weekly or daily moving averages, you can oftentimes get different opinions based on uh, the time frames you're using. Um, but I, I think there's another thing, and that is Bitcoin's going to do what Bitcoin's going to do. And it doesn't matter what <laughs> Eric, Eric thinks, doesn't matter what I think. More often than not, it'll do what we don't think it'll do, or at least do it not in a way that we think it's going to do it. But, you know, I, I look and, uh, you, you know, people who follow me know that I'm extremely long term constructive on Bitcoin. But I think we've got some problems here. You know, you know the decline that we saw on September 24th was significant for me. I'm a chartist. I look at charts. I have to follow what the charts tell me, particularly look at patterns. And, you know, the chart patterns for me became very, very negative on, on September 24th. We completed a descending triangle top. We turned up on the ADX reading, which I follow as a confirming indicator. We also expanded and diverged the Bollinger Bands. And, and normally when those things happen, the mistake is trying to jump in and pick a bottom too quickly rather than let the market play itself out, 
try to find proof that we're going to head back to the upside. Right now, my default position is uh, Bitcoin will move lower. I do have targets. They're lower than Eric's. I, I think Bitcoin could go back to 52, 5300. Uh, I have a cluster of targets, depending on how I look at the chart and determine those. But, you know, 67, 6800, down to 6000, down to uh, 5300. But 5300 is kind of in the back of my mind where I think this decline is going to take us. I think the big surprise may be that this extended sideways congestion lasts a lot longer. Everybody wants to either be bull or bear in Bitcoin. Well, how about just chop? Uh, mm. and, and we yeah. could chop ourselves out uh, for really perhaps the next six months. And that's going to completely wear out the bulls. And that may be what we need to have happen in order to really put uh, an underpinning in this market and head it back north. What do you think about that, Eric? Do you agree with that sort of like long term sideways chop that Peter is talking about? I think it's very um, I mean, I, I mean, obviously, it's very possible. Right. And it'd be the thing that probably most people don't want to happen the most, which means that it's <laughs> yeah. actually quite likely, you know, um, you know, Peter 100 percent nailed it. And uh, most of the time people want to be full on bull. They want to be full on bear. It's like joining a gang in a sense. You know, it's you only want that direction <laughs> because it appeals to, you know, whatever it is in your ego, I suppose. Um, but at the end of the day, a lot of the times we're kind of just chopping trendless. And, uh, you know, while I do think that uh, lower targets than 7000 are certainly very likely myself as a trader, I take things one step at a time and I do feel like there is uh, a potential, you know, potential reversal point or at least structural, you know, uh, support built up at around that seven thousand dollar level. Again, give or take a couple hundred bucks. If that bounce does get faded, if we see, you know, some sort of divergence play, if we see just something, uh, you know, something signaling that is that is petering out, then the next, you know, relevant level to the downside uh, for me would probably be around the same area. I think, um, you know, I, I think obviously you have a lot of support built up in like the mid fives. And then after that, uh, we see a lot of this market coming down to the monthly 55 exponential moon average, which for Bitcoins all the way down in the like mid to uh, high 4000s. A lot of vaults already there. Um, you know, is that foreshadowing a move in Bitcoin? You know, it's it's which comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? And unfortunately, most of this market moves together. And I would say that uh, alts looking extra, extra bearish, I suppose you could say, um, does bode a little bit on the worst side for Bitcoin overall. So I do think it's very possible. But my, again, myself as a trader, I, I take every major level as a potential, you know, definitely, you know, a very, very likely uh, bounce place and a potential reversal, tar you know, potential reversal uh, pivot as well. But, you know, that needs to be accompanied by getting back above a certain level that changes the structure. So for right now, that, that certain level still would be about 9100 If we got down to that $7,000-ish level, if we maybe got back above uh, perhaps, uh, it's kind of hard to call it right now. But I'd imagine somewhere in like the mid to high eights, then that would probably do it for me. But uh, again, just kind of has to be taken one step at a time from my, from my perspective. So, Peter, you tweeted last week that the hardest part of trading is not what to do when the world gets turned upside, such as now in Bitcoin. The hardest part is making the tough decisions in advance so that one is not forced to act in haste when things become crazy. Exactly what kinds of decisions are you guys making to prepare for events like this most recent market drop? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that was really a reference to what I sense, maybe correctly, maybe incorrectly, from social media is we got a whole world of FOMO traders out there. Right? There are people that really don't go into the day deciding here's what I'm going to do here, the conditions upon what I'm going to, how I'm going to act here. I'm going to, how am I going to preposition for tomorrow? How am I going to preposition for next week, for next month? Uh, on what basis do I make decisions? And that is my observation of, of an awful lot of participants in this market is they're flying by the seat of their pants. Uh, they're responding to quick movements in the market, and that is idiotic. I, I mean, for me, the preparation was in making the determination during this congestion area that we had is that I wanted to reduce my, my holdings in Bitcoin extensively. I didn't wait for a big drop. Uh, I, I mean, I had been basically long Bitcoin. Uh, by the way, I'm not a day trader. But I'm also not a holder, and I refuse to use the HOL, the HODL world. But uh, <laughs> y y you know, I th I'm I'm a strategic holder, and that means that I want to sidestep what I think are extended periods of uncertainty or the possibility of extended declines. And so, I think the hard decision was to exit Bitcoin during that congestion area and favorable prices, and being willing to prepare yourself for a big decline. 
uh, rather than waiting for a sharp down day where Bitcoin's down 10, 15 percent and then deciding that perhaps you need to do something with the Bitcoins you own. So really, that was my reference for that tweet. Eric, how do you pre uh, prepare for events like these since you sort of predicted this movement coming? Yeah, so my my trigger as a trader when I kind of switched from being more bullish to more bearish was when Bitcoin lost that critical ten thousand three hundred dollar level that we spoke about a, about a month ago. Um, that was a big deal for me, and uh, just kind of piggyback back on what Peter uh, said there. You know, my mentor used to always tell me, and it's a little bit crass, but uh, but please stick with it. And he'd say, you know, the market <laughs> the market will fuck you whenever it wants, and uh, and of course, when you fail to plan, then you have no, then you have nothing to go off of. When you get into those more emotional situations, as Peter was kind of referring to, you're usually going to make the wrong decision. So in those sorts of situations, you know, I found that uh, I found that you know when I don't have a plan going into a major trade like that usually goes extremely, extremely poorly. So I've been, uh, you know, I've, I've, I completely agree with that. And overall, you know, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin breaking that major level, that's kind of where I did change my mind on it. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, it always feels bad, especially after riding a, a nice move to the upside. Um, it always feels bad, you know, kind of getting out of that position, but at the end of the day, trends are changing and that's your job as a trader is to recognize when that change behavior has actually happened. Yeah, Eric, it's you know you just said something that's so interesting. Sometimes, you know, we exit the position even though it's the right thing to do. It feels like an old friend died. Yeah, yeah, we get attached. We get attached. Yeah. It's 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 a human. It's a human condition. We get attached yeah. whether we like it or not. Yeah. So are we are we in a bear market right now? And if so, how are we supposed to survive this one? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go ahead, Eric. You go first. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah. So, are we in a bear market right now? Well, I don't necessarily think that um, you know going up three hundred fifty percent constitutes a bear market. We did have a reversal, and I do believe that we're going to be downtrending for a little bit of time. But the way that I look at at a bear market is you know prolonged downtrend over the course of in crypto in cryptocurrency language about six months to a year. In in traditional world, you know perhaps multiple years. In you know in some senses. Um, so what I say that is you know is Bitcoin in a bear market right now? I would not define it as such until we actually break major structures structural um, areas below about uh, 4,500. That's where I become an, a long-term bear, talking about like actual long-term trending to the downside, meaning that we just set in a major lower high at this $14,000 level, and we're going to be, you know, setting in lower lows along the way as well. Yeah, I'd, I would jump in here and, and, and just, again, make my comments relative to what I see from the technicals. And if you look at a weekly chart of Bitcoin and you define an uptrend as a series of higher highs and higher lows, well, we're in an uptrend. The long-term mm -hmm. trend in Bitcoin is definitely up. But I use a proxy for a trend, and that's that's an 18-week moving average. And, and uh, you know, everybody has a different number that they use for that moving average. And uh, I think the importance is one is consistent and one uh, trades accordingly. But for me, uh, the market is just hanging on. And, and should we go lower or sideways here for another couple of weeks, my 18 week moving average rolls over to the downside and uh, that will then result in me uh, declaring Bitcoin as in a bear market, at least in that time frame. So um, building off of that, over the weekend, Tommy Lee tweeted that excluding the 10 best days of the year, Bitcoin is down 25% on the year. He followed this by asking, are you that good at trading? And adding that he believes Bitcoin is weak in trendless macro. What does he mean by Bitcoin being weak and trendless macro? And what do you think about his observation of the Bitcoin market? Do you think that holding, or as you didn't say earlier, hodling is a better strategy than trading, as his comments seem to imply? I'm, you know, I'm an old guy. I mean, by the time Bitcoin becomes what everybody thinks it's going to be, I'm long gone. And so, you know, I'm a swing trader. And so, I, you know, I'm not going to be married to any trade. I, I've traded now for more than 45 years. And, and I think some uh, sort of, of absolute view of a market, of any market at any time for any reason is wrong. Uh, I, I mean, I've, I've approached the whole Bitcoin market as the fact that there's a 50% chance it goes to 100,000 or you name the price and a 50% chance it goes to zero. And so, uh, you know, I want to be positioned accordingly in case it goes up, but I, I don't want to be married to Bitcoin and have it go to zero because I think that still is a possibility. I'm not going to get into the reasons why I think it's beyond the scope of what we're doing here. 
Uh, and so I disagree. I, I disagree with Tom. Yeah, I, I think there's a time to uh, own Bitcoin and not be a day trader with the idea that you're going to stay with it. I don't personally like to stay with the position that's going against me. Yeah, 100 percent. Um, you know, I'd. I'd 100% agree with that, really, because at the end of the day, you know, when he says, are you really, you know, are you really that good at trading Bitcoin? Well, it's a great time to be a hodler in an upwards market. It's never a good time to be a hodler in a downwards market because Bitcoin loves to play out, you know, 80%, 90% retracements on average. And so when we're looking at just something as simple as perhaps just the weekly trend, just looking at higher highs and higher lows and lower lows and lower highs, just judging that, I mean, that could just be even a, even a very um, a basic way of doing it, but it it works, you know, and even just doing something very, very simple like that would 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 offer better results than just blindly buying at, you know, at any hour of the day. I would imagine that most people blindly buying during uh, 2018, not so happy with a statement like that. Longer term, perhaps... Which, again, brings up that conversation of it really comes back to your perspective, right? Myself as a day trader, I'm, well, I, I do care about, you know, it does matter to me. And, uh, and of course, that's the way that I'm going to trade. That's the way that I make my living. But I'd imagine that, you know, a lot of people out there, this is maybe more of like a hobby or perhaps they're more of an investor, like long term. And that's going to completely change that perspective. So, you know, would it be the worst thing to do? Um, I mean, maybe not. You know, I mean, all the people who bought in, uh, what is it, 2014, 2015 during that bear market, they're quite happy right now as well, assuming that they did hold through it. But at the end of the day, it comes down to your personal perspective. And, I, you know, I'd say for myself, I disagree. Maybe for someone else, it could be true. Yeah. All right. This next question is for the viewers. Straightforward and blunt. Is Bitcoin going to 100K or is it going to zero? <laughs> Flip a coin. <laughs> yeah, it's the all or nothing proposition, right? Um, at the end of the day, I'm a believer in Bitcoin, uh, regardless of whether I'm bearish or bullish right now. I do believe in it long term. I think that I have a strong personal belief that anything that gives people more autonomous control over their lives, such as finances, for one, is, you know, mostly a good thing and probably going to get, you know, picked up by the uh, by the mainstream. It's just a matter of time. We do see all the traditional venues starting to build up infrastructure. We see CMEs not only offering futures, but now talking about options, which I'm elated about because that's where I come from. Um, and then, of course, we also see, you know, ETFs being talked about. Batch just went live. So these institutions and, and I'm sure Peter would agree with this. Um, being a trader himself, these institutions, they're not wasting their time just putting up all this stuff. They're not trying to, you know, just 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 go through the uh, rigmarole for, you know, for the sake of it. It means that they likely see that there's at least something there. And I do believe that adds on to the validity of this space as a whole. And I would, you know, if I had to give an answer, 100,000. Do I know when that's going to happen? Hell no. <laughs> you know, we could be talking 5, 10, 20 years out. I think a lot of people are maybe a little bit more on too much on the optimist, op optimistic side for the bulls. Then again, you know, does it go to zero? Well, this is still an experiment, right? We don't know. I mean, you know, we there's there's legitimate concerns with the technology. Absolutely. I mean, what happens if quantum computing becomes a legitimate thing? You know, what if it becomes a widespread thing? Well, that would be an issue. You know, it's, it's it kind of makes the uh, the network a little bit less secure. So there there certainly are still roadblocks in the way. But you know, as, as a Bitcoin believer, I suppose I'd say a hundred thousand. Are, are you still 50-50, Peter? Are there like certain well, factors you're considering? Yeah, or But you have to quantify that because, yes, 50-50, but you have to look at risk-reward. I mean, Bitcoin at $8,000 is a lot closer to zero than it is to 100000 For me, what that means is this is a highly asymmetrical trade. I love asymmetrical trades. Give me asymmetrical trades. I've made my living on asymmetrical trades. And so with an upside potential of 92,000 and a downside potential of 8,000, if I can with, with basic, uh, really simple technical uh, tools, such as a moving average, wow, it's a no brainer that I'm gonna be biased toward the long side. I'm biased toward 100,000 simply because it's a fabulous risk reward trade. So right now, um, are you guys, Given that Bitcoin's kind of like unsteady right now, are you guys allocating more of your portfolios into altcoins or are you like what, where are you putting your portfolios right now? Fiat, baby, fiat. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding the uh, dollar shit coin right now, unfortunately. Uh, my altcoin portfolio is the exact same, whether it's a bull or bear market for Bitcoin, it is zero and will uh, like unlikely ever change. I think that's right on. I, I mean, for me, uh, Bitcoin is crypto. Crypto is Bitcoin. Yeah, if Bitcoin is not going to be a magnificent long-term play, these altcoins and other macro caps are worthless. 
And so, yeah, my interest is in Bitcoin, Bitcoin alone. I, I just, I look at these altcoins, I think just they're a big distraction. Yeah, agreed. Now, don't get me wrong, though. I do think you'd be a little bit naive to believe that every single altcoin is just, you know, completely worthless. We have thousands of these guys. But at the end of the day, you know, a, maybe a handful are going to be successful, but it's really going to likely come off the back of Bitcoin to begin with. Anyways, Bitcoin's like the frontier in a sense. You know, it has, you know, has the most history going on right now. And, uh, and if Bitcoin doesn't succeed, it just kind of it, it would greatly diminish the case for anything else I'd imagine. Thank you, everyone, for watching. This has been your host, Jackson, with veteran trader Peter Brandt and YouTuber, streamer, trader Eric Crown. Hope you enjoyed the show. And as always, remember to like, subscribe, and hodl. Hey, and I'm serious when I said, Eric, it's rare. You get all of these, uh, I call them cryptomaniacs. Man, they're, <laughs> they're, they're reinventing technical analysis in a way yeah. to make the fathers of technical analysis roll in their grave. Well, uh, the, I mean, the... they're just making up the rules as they go. It's crazy. I look at yeah. charts on Twitter and I go, whoa, this is a map to the outer <laughs> space. But uh, it's, it's simple more of moving what you averages want to see. or exponential mm -hmm. moving averages, man, I mean, they're so useful. So the basic yep. stuff is really where it's at as far as I'm yeah, concerned. You know, and that that's the thing. I started out uh, being a market maker on the floor of New York Stock Exchange Arcus. So my my mentor down there who had been doing this for about 35 years at the time, he was all about EMAs and uh, and, and moving averages. So that's kind of how I learned from that. And, uh, yeah. you know, and, and you said it perfectly. I mean, there's some very simple strategies that require a lot of patience, but they work. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.